afternoon, chicks and dicks, dudes and clits. Um, we're painting a gun, not a real gun. This is a Ranger M4 made by Seamark. We are going to go through and run through what we're using today. We'll be using four coats of Rust-Oleum paint with khaki, army green, olive green, and dark earth brown. We have a very cheap mask and tape, a very thin the adhesive socks. Uh, it feels like paper. It's not good for this. Use something better quality. I think I paid two dollars for this at might have ten or something. Don't use that. It sucks. Get something better. Um, why would you paint a gap? The purpose of painting a gap is to break up, break it up. This is a very distinct shape and color. It does not blend well with polymers. We want to stop that from happening. Painting does that. But don't don't rely solely on painting. Wrap some scrim around it as well. It breaks up the shape. This is some scrim we're going to be using for our patterns. You can buy it in true blue for like $12 a meter. Cut by the meter. The first step we're going to be going on to today is masking. Things that have to be masks are uh, masked with tape when painting a rifle is glass, both sides of glass, uh, your flashlights if you use them, the uh, output end of the flashlight and the ignition end, so uh, the ends of the barrels here, put some tape in there, tape around it, Obviously, I'll show you that after this, information on your scopes, so all of the magnification volumes as well as uh, the focus for your eye relief, like you have numbers on them and you use that to actually dial. Cover that because that is important information that you will need to use. However, on this model I am capped, I have caps on mine, I can just paint over them. If this is open you want to put some tape in here, uh, but I have a dust cover so I'm just going to use that because that works. Get some tape, put it over the barrel, cinch that crap down, protect the threads, that's very important to protect the threads. If you get paint on your threads, it will glue your muzzle device to it pretty much. And, uh, it just makes life hard, so just, just avoid that. It is okay to put tape on your scope lenses, um, as long as it's not like super glue. Just give you the lens a quick wipe after when you're done. That's what I like to do. I like to wipe my lenses when finished. Make sure it's all good. You need to. It needs to be clear. And you can use this information on real rifles, real equipment, like uh, binos and stuff like that, spotting scopes. Now, the first coat, depending on your environment, uh, this is going, the environment I'm using this in is very dry, but it, it is also a little bit green this time of year, so I'm going to mainly have darker colours, uh, sorry, lighter colours, so khaki and, what's this, olive, olive green, army green, are going to be my two main visible colours. So I'm going to start with my darkest green because that's in the colour that's going to be seen the least but is going to lay the foundation. Now we wait for it to dry. It won't take long because it is Rust-Oleum. So it's pretty much dry now. Like literally. Yeah, it is dry. I can touch it. 
and it's not sticking to me. So we'll swap it back over and do this side. And I'm not going really close or full auto, like just spraying the crap out of it. I want it to be thin because it is going to have other coats on it. So I don't care if it shows through my, that sticks out as much. It doesn't hurt to pick it up as well. Just do a bit of this. Let's finish the stock off. Pick for that to dry. A lot of people like to let it dry overnight. Uh, I'm not a bitch. So I'll let this sit for like a minute and then I'll add the second coat and start adding patterns. Now that this side is dry, going to get rid of that and get our next coat, our next color. We need some foliage. I'm going to go grab some. Now that I have some foliage, we can make some patterns, break up the shape of a gat. So we're going to start with some of this. I've never painted with this before, so I don't know how this is going to go. Put some, some of it down and do diagonal lines. I'm going to do some cactus. Crank it up. That actually looks really nice. I kind of like that. Now the tighter you pull it to the gun, the better it's going to look. This paint's not like getting behind it, so to speak, when you spray paint it. Yes. Now that that's done, I want to kind of fill in the gap in gaps in between with our other color. So this is going to be olive green in this stage. So I want to pull this really tight to the gap and then just fill it in. on to the next portion. If you accidentally paint into your other pattern, just go back over it. Fixing mistakes, something you can't do with children. Wrap your willy. Don't be silly. Yep, that looks good. So, moving on to the next pattern. Branches. Branches are epic. This is something a uh, YouTube channel known as House Gamers taught me. This is grab cardboard. 
That's better. Grab cardboard and do this with it. And then just hit it hard. Like that. It's starting to come together. It looks more for it now. I'm really weird. If you... I like to overlap everything. So where it's green, I want to put tan. And where it's tan, I want to put green. While also going over all of this brown. It makes it... breaks it all up. Nature doesn't have a distinct leveling system so to speak to it like a garden you look at a garden it's all neat it's laid out it's deliberate nature is like throw shit at it and I want to invert the pattern so where it's tan I want to put the scrim but very lightly and where it's Green, I want to put this weird bolt, this weird shit that I found that I ripped off my mom's garden. I hope she can't hear me because she will kill me. That looks fine. It's pretty good. Now, the other side. Let's do the same thing. Just mirror it. Then that's pretty much pen raffle. Let it, let it, as you see, I literally have not let any of these layers dry but the base. Um, you do that, you should be fine. 